Okay, good evening everyone. Um, Mark, MTF, the leader, mayor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I also acknowledge as the others did before me, the church members of this land and those who are past and present. Um, congestion is negatively impacting our quality of life locally. There's no two ways about that. It's reducing the time we spend at home, it's polluting our environment and it's damaging our economy. I'm very proud to say that if elected the people of Eltham will experience nothing short of a transport revolution locally. But before I go there, I think it's useful to recall where we've been. Given that the Liberals have only been in government for four out of the past 19 years, and often have been in Labor hands for the past 16 years, what we have achieved in those four years is noteworthy. We proudly funded the traffic lights at Parra and Rattray Roads. We replaced and widened the bridge at Waddle Tree Road in Eltham North. We widened Fitzsimmons Lane. We spent $60 million upgrading the first bridge line, improving reliability, efficiency, and enabling extra peak period services. We also put protective services officers at every station, even though that was opposed. At the 2014 election, even though I was not a candidate, we pledged to convert the bus lanes on Fitzsimmons Lane for use by other transiting vehicles, including cars. We pledged to properly upgrade Bolton Street with $20.6 million invested, in including works to Fitzsimmons Lane. We committed $1.5 million for traffic lights at Leanne Drive. We committed money also to planning to reduce the congestion in Eltham itself. $300,000 for safe pedestrian crossing at St. Helena. And, of course, the East West Link. Sadly, the local commitments made in 2014 were not able to proceed because there was a change of government. It saddens me that we've not got, we have got much less than we have needed. I would have loved to have seen in Eltham at least one level crossing removed. I would have loved to have seen in Eltham Labor deliver just three more peak hour services originating from Eltham or Hurst Bridge that were actually promised on the weekday. I would have loved to have seen in Eltham the solutions we've been calling for on Leanne Drive and Beard Street actually occur three and a half years ago. I would have loved to see the Bolton Street traders compensated for the damage the works caused their business and their families. Perhaps most of all, I'm disappointed that even today we haven't managed to achieve a bipartisan approach to duplicating the train line all the way to Eltham Station. And this brings me to a positive vision, a positive vision I see for the Eltham Electric. What we will do is what successive governments have failed to do, duplicate once and for all the train line to Eltham Station. This will mean a 10 minute peak hour service to Eltham and Montmorency. If you fail to duplicate the line, you simply cannot achieve a 10 minute service to Eltham. We'll protect the Trestle Bridge by retaining it and ensuring its future use. That's critical. We will build a new station at Monty. That's critical. Many of you will recall the stations numerous before it which had been burnt down and vandalised. Without doubt, if we don't have to provide more car parks, and both speakers have made that point, we don't provide more car parks, you're simply providing a system that people can't access. We would be pleased to provide 150 new free car parks. It has to happen. There's no use duplicating the line and spending money if people can't access the train. From the first day I get elected, should that occur on the 25th of November, I will call out to locals for them to make public submissions about where they think the car park should go. I know we've got the capacity to have 150 new car parks, and I think it's critical that locals get to have a say in where they are located. Ladies and gentlemen, I will attack congestion from all angles. This includes road-based solutions. That includes Fitzsimmons Lane Roundabout, two other roundabouts that go on from that, Foot Street and Williamson's Road, because if you don't do the other two, you're simply causing a bottleneck further down the line. The death trap that is Civic Drive, and I state that clearly, Accidents happen there every single day. We have to get on and do something to Civic Drive. There are no excuses. Leanne Drive and Beard Street must be safe, both for cars but also for pedestrians. Likewise, the intersection at Allendale Road and Ryan's Road. It's been like that forever. It's getting worse. We have to do something about it. I'm committed to duplicating the bridge street from Main Road, Eltham, just up here, to the Sherbourne Road Kindergarten. As soon as the bus pulls over or someone pulls into Bunnings, the main artery of Eltham clogs. It stops. Everyone stops. That means you get home later. It means you're at work later. 
either which way you cut it, it can be fixed. It's not a hard fix. We will also do the east-west thing. If you don't do the east-west, the eastern freeway becomes a car park because both parties have committed to do the north-eastern. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. Starting right here in Eltham, I will also personally champion a pedestrian overpass approach in this state. I believe pedestrians and people do not mix. Even at lights, cars run red lights. I would like to see solutions locally and have identified with locals already areas that would be suitable for this approach. They include Main Road Eltham between Beard Street and Leanne Drive, Main Road Lower Plenty between Cressy and Sackville Streets, and St Helena Road at the roundabout where it meets the Aqueduct Road. Appropriately, not all solutions require significant investment of taxpayer dollars. Many are common sense, and some are as simple as a, as a stop sign. It might also be worthy of repurposing existing infrastructure, like the bus lanes on Fitzsimmons Lane, which four years ago we called to be open. They should be open to traffic both ways. Likewise, footpaths, they play a critical role in keeping locals safe. That's why I'll work with the two local councils in the Eltham electorate to ensure we have a, foot, a footpath strategy that goes across municipal boundaries and actually caters to pedestrians' needs. I'll also work with cyclists and walkers to build upon the existing network. Lastly, I will seek to put an end to the bickering between the Department of Education and councils and work to convince the government that I will be part of that the Department of Education should accept responsibility to plan appropriately for car parking for teachers and a safe drop-off for parents and their children, a kiss and drop. The buck passing has to come to an end. The days we are asking parents to raise money for parking should be numbered. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a crossroads in Eltham. You have a stark choice, a clear choice at the next election. You have a plan to beat congestion locally, to improve our amenity, to improve our infrastructure, to take us in to the next 50, 60, 70, 100 years. It's yours to grasp. It's a plan that actually addresses the congestion we are facing and the stopping you from getting home. And it's the plan that delivers to people of Montmorency, Eltham, Fry Hill, Eltham North, St Helena, Lower Plenty Research and Greensboro. The choice of this election, I believe, can be clear. Thank you.